Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. And it is, of course, time for another episode of the Daily De Leads. Today it is Friday, the 18th of June, which means only one thing. England plays Scotland. Another Calvin Phillips masterclass, surely in the offing. Make sure you join me on the channel at 8pm as England put Scotland to the sword. Famous last words. Before we get into the video, like it, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 4K. Get your comments in and, of course, hit that notification bell. I'll see you tonight at 8 if you're there to join me. Enjoy the rest of the video. So, guys, in today's episodes, we have a few links with some more amazing, talented youngsters, surely, in the offing, beating all the big clubs to all this young talent. What a future it's going to be at Leeds United. We've got some updates on Alioski. Of course, an update on another left-back, Maxwell Cornet, we're going to hear from Calvin Grealish, um, plenty, plenty more. Erling Haaland, we're going to hear from Erling Haaland. So, loads in today's episode. We'll start first of all with, of course, the potential signing of Birmingham City forward Amari Miller. I spoke to you the other day, I think it was two days ago now when this was first muted, but it looks like it's getting further down the line. It looks like we are going to be, you know, a, a host of clubs to this. Lad signature and discussions, guys, are thought to be really far advanced. So watch this space. Of course, Matt Jackson's under 23s look like they're going to have abundance of talent join them this summer. You know, we're attacking. We won the league. We're now going up a division, and it looks like we're going to attack that with the same vigor that we did the Premier League too. Um, and another, another youngster dubbed the next Virgil Van Dyke, no less. Leo Hegeld at Celtic. Of course, the Whites have planned a lot of first-team acquisitions, specifically left-back, centre midfielder and a winger. That's what we're going to do. But, of course, we're looking to bolster Mark Jackson's Premier League 2 side as well. And Hegeldi is one of several youngsters on the domestic scene and abroad who leads are after. And the YEP Graham Smith's done an article specifically on Hegeldi, and he is one of several youngsters on the European and domestic scene that leads are very keen on. He doesn't turn uh, 18 until August, but he's gained senior first-team experience in the Scottish Premiership last season on loan at Ross County. And we are keen to add the centre-half to the under-23 side. Obviously, I, I, as I brought to you a number of weeks ago now, after the West Brom game, Oli Casey is looking like he's going to leave. It looks like Blackpool's going to be the destination for him. And the 17-year-old left-sided defender signed for Celtic from Rosenberg two years ago now, signing a three-year deal at the time. And he added, headed out on loan uh, to get some first-team experience at Ross County at just 17-year-old. Remember, he only turns 18 in August. Um, he started seven games for them, scored a goal in the Scottish top tier for Ross County, playing at centre-back, left-back, and left midfield and earned rave reviews from the then Stoggies boss, John Hughes, who tipped him to be the next Virgil van Dijk. Obviously, we already have Virgil van Strouk. It looks like we're going to get Virgil van Hegeldi as well. Can you imagine them two in the future as a partnership? Things are looking good at Leeds United. But yeah, um, just on uh, Ross County manager John Hughes' comments, he said, Leo is going to be the next van Dijk. Trust me on that, said Hughes, who addressed the Leeds United interest in the defender in April. Uh, he said the quality has shown the physical challenge, playing real men's football and standing up to it. Remember, he's only 17. It's been a wonderful experience for Leo. Before he came, Leeds United were after him. I think he had to sign an extension to his contract for the loan to go through. He's got massive things in front of him. He won't be far away from Celtic's first team when he goes back. This will do him the world of good, training and playing with men, getting battered about and coming back for more. He's got more in the locker. He's got a great left foot. Another glowing rendition or reception came from Ross County's centre-back partnership called Donaldson. And he echoed Hughes's appreciation for the Celtic prospect. Um, after he helped Ross County avoid the drop last season, he said, look, Leo has been great. Um, you have to look at his age. He's only seven, 17 years old. It's quite easy to forget that because he doesn't really play like a 17-year-old, it's, it's his first experience of men's football and it's in a relegation battle. It's the hardest challenge to come into, but I think that this is the type of player he is. He's very confident in his own ability and he's played different positions. He'll have a bright future if he continues to play, play the way he is doing. Leo will do what's best for him. He'll have his family and agent and he'll decide whether or not 
He wants to try it down south. But he's had a big club in Celtic, so I guess he'll have to assess it. And he says, Hegeldio has featured for the Norway under-18 side and scored in last week's 2-1 friendly defeat by Portugal. He's the son of former Rosenberg and Nottingham Forest defender John Olav. So there's some more information on Hegeldi. Um, the article is in the description for your viewing pleasure. Make sure you check that out. I've just gone through some of the key bits within the article but what signing that would be, Hageldi, you've got Pascal Strauch, you've got England's future number one in Daryl Ombang. You know, we've already got in that squad Joel Geldar, Sam Greenwood, Crescenzo, Somerville. You know, a lot of these lads, let's not forget, were wanted by big clubs. You know, Everton keeps getting mentioned. We know about Geldar being linked to Liverpool, Manchester United. You know, it's, it, it's amazing to be a Leeds fan right now and what a prospect it must be for these young players to look at Leeds United, look at Bielsa, look at the setup and say, yeah, that's the club for me. That that wouldn't have happened. That's never happened, you know, in, in such a long time, you know, and now they want to come to our football club. Of course, it's going to be tough to prime away from Celtic, but ultimately, and I mean this with all the respect to any Scottish Premier League fans, players go to Scotland and then the hope is that they can then move down south and get moved to the Premier League. It is just a fact. You know, I, I'm sorry to say that. It is just the truth. You know, players come, they'll go there. And then where do they want to move? Of course, they want to move to the Premier League because that's one of the best leagues in the world. And that's not, you know, shared on the Scottish Premier League, but it's just a fact, you know. And look at look at the facts for Leeds United, you know. Amari Miller, Birmingham City forward, young kid, you know, the next, let's call him uh, the next Jude Bellingham. Maybe they'll retire Amari Miller's <laughs> number as well. You know, you've got Celtic youngster Leo Hageldi, who's been coined the next Virgil van Dijk. You know, Daryl Ombang, who already is touted for a place in um, in Bradford City's first team at the age of like 16. He's been playing in the under-18 since the age of 14 and, you know, goes out to Lillyshaw or whatever it's called. I know it used to be called Lillyshaw, you know, and, and trains with England consistently. You've got Sam Greenwood, you've got Joe Gelhart, and all these players are going to come through to our first team. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, as I say, I, I, I'm... The signing of Hageldi really excites me. Whenever you see an, you know, the next Virgil van Dijk, then of course it pricks your ears up. And the fact that the YEP and Beren have all done a big article on this kid means it's further down the road. Same with the likes of um, Amari Miller, you know. And um, So watch this space on that one. And of course it sounds like Hageldi as well can play a number of positions, having played at left back, left mid and centre back. It's what you want. I know it's not immediate, which we all want, but look, we're only going to get three anyway. You know, left back, midfielder, and a winger. Let's watch this space. That left back, of course, there's been a number of names mentioned. Parade, who I believe the move to Southampton, they look to be going elsewhere now. So whether, you know, there's still a chance for Leeds to get that done. There is, of course, uh, Javi Gallan who, at Huesca, the one that I want. And now we're, we're seeing Maxwell Cornet and still an unnamed one. There's still not been anything confirmed that Maxwell Cornet is that unnamed one. But just to give you some more information on Cornet, of course, Leeds see Cornet as an exciting option to come in on the left side of defence. Listen, my opinion is I want a proper left back. I don't want a midfield to switch left back. But if Cornet's the one, then of course that still excites me. I just prefer an actual proper left back that's played there since he was a kid. Um, of course, the 24-year-old plays at Ivory Coast um, and he boasts the type of skill set that, that Bielsa is looking for. Um, now, on the French side of things, obviously he plays at Lyon. There has been some surprise in France that Lyon would let Cornet depart. However, the club's reasoning is now becoming clear. So French media outlet um, have said that the new manager at Lyon, which is Peter Bowes, is keen to uh, hand emerging left-back Melvin Bard an opportunity in the first team. So he wants to give Melvin Bard a chance in the first, time, first team. Now, selling Cornet would, would allow the manager to give Bard his chance in the first team and also getting a, a, a quite a, a substantial fee. You know, we're seeing anything between 30 and 40 million. He's then going to be able to strengthen elsewhere within his side. So maybe he looks at Melvin Bard and says, right, there's enough in this kid. You know, he's an emerging left back. He's a great talent. Let's put him at left back. Let's move Cornet on, get him off the wage bell, and we're going to get a big transfer fee and look to move elsewhere. So the fact that the French media are looking into it and are surprised by it, but then also there is reasoning. And let's not forget as well over in France, there's the issues with the TV rights, which means why we got Rafinha for as much as what they paid for him, you know, a, a year before. We paid 70 million for Rafinha. 
Admittedly, the Cornet one is like 40 million. It's a big it's a big money move. It is a big money move. So if Leeds are willing to put that out and go for him, then I'm all I'm all for it. But I would like a, a specialised left back. One left back that we do have uh, at the club is of, of course Shani Alioski. And it's been reported in the press, you know, that Leeds have not given up hope of persuading him to remain at Ellen Road. Obviously, he scored uh, a rebound yesterday in North Macedonia's win. Um, he has been offered a new contract by Leeds, but he's yet to sign on the dotted line. Um, obviously, there was noise that he might move to that club that we don't like to name, and apparently that's fallen through. Whether or not there was even a deal on the table, we just don't know. But he's he's not moved now, and he can sign a pre-contract agreement. And all has said, look, there is not a chance he's there's a club there waiting for him because he wouldn't have put in the effort that he did towards the end of the season. Um, he's still not found a new club. He's got a fortnight left before he becomes a free agent, which will be on the July the 1st. So I assume at that time we're going to find out about Alioski and what he wants to do. You know, maybe he's putting himself in the shop window some more in the Euros, saying, look, look what I can do. Uh, he scored, you know, I think it was his 46th gap. Um, admittedly, he missed the penalty, but he still scored. He's quite influential within that side. So we'll have to wait and see on what happens with Gianni Alioski, but I think we will know come the 1st of July. Uh, another current Leeds player um, is, of course, Helder Costa. Now, Helder Costa has been pictured back in training. Obviously, he got a, quite a bad back injury after um, Aaron Wambiscuits basically backbreaked him in that Manchester United game, if you remember. Didn't even get a yellow card. But um, Helder Costa has been seen training in Portugal early doors, wanting to get back fit. Look, Helder Costa will be a squad player. It doesn't look like Leeds United are trying to move anyone on this window. Maybe not even Kiko Casilla. Obviously, we've lost Pablo, we've lost Berardi. We're going to move some of the under-23s on, I would imagine, like Gotts, McCalmont, Casey, Edmondson's already gone out on loan. So I expect a lot of these to move on. But from the first team, we're pretty small and slight anyway. So the fact that Helder Costa's been muted as being back in pre-season, looks fit, ready, raring to go. I think he's staying at the club, guys. Um, and do you know what? Bielsa is not expecting to have the full squad back in West Yorkshire for, you know, another fortnight after, um, you know, the, the uh, Euros has finished. So, you know, getting someone like Costa in early, you know, and getting him started early can only be a benefit. And of course, we're going to see some of these under 23s, Geldak, Greenwood, Somerville, getting, I guess, more of a chance to impress Bielsa during pre-season to see whether or not they're ready for the first team. Uh, so watch this space on Helder Costa. Um, Erling Haaland, guys, has been speaking about Leeds. He's Leeds as, uh, and he knows he is. Of course, if we were, you know, a top six club on the regular, you know, for a fact, Haaland would already be wearing that famous white shirt. Um, but he has credited his Leeds roots and the influence of his father on his career. Um, he was born in Leeds, of course, um, you know, to Alfinger Haaland and his partner um, at, while, while Haaland was at, you know, Leeds um, before they moved back to Norway. And he said, that's where I get my sense of humour from um, when discussing the city of his birth. Um, you know, he gets that, that Yorkshire sense of humour. We've seen what he's like in interviews. So we are we are to blame for the way Haaland is in interviews. But I absolutely love it that he still speaks regularly uh, about Leeds United. Um, of course, he's, his dad plays for us 83 times during a three-year spell, um, and he earned 34 Norwegian caps. Haaland coming out saying, look, I, I've got a long way to go yet before I reach my father's achievements in the game. No disrespect to Alfinger, but I, I think he'll surpass his dad. <laughs> there's there's no qualms about that. Um, some more Euro stuff. Calvin Phillips has been named in the L'Equipe team of the week following Sunday's performance against Croatia. Obviously, round one of fixtures finished in the Euros and Calvin Phillips was in that squad. Who'd have thought that would have happened, you know, when he all them years ago when, when Bielsa came in? I say all them years ago, it was only three now. Um, one funny thing that did come out, Jack, Cre Jack Grealish was doing some uh, media work and he actually said that he'd had a word with Calvin um, and he said, have a word with Leeds United fans for me um, because he gets hammered online. Um, and he says to, to Phillips all the time, you know, um, have a word with him, mate, because they hammer me all the time. He was doing an interview on Talk Sport and he said, look, I don't know if you know, but I get absolutely battered by Leeds fans 24-7. And he had a little word in Calvin's ear and said, come on, mate, sort it out, will you? Um, so this... <laughs> If he's good enough for Calvin, he's good enough for me. You know what I mean? I've, I, I have started to change my opinion on Jack Grealish. I know I might get shot for this in the comments, but I have. And listen, the fact that, that Calvin's best 
you know, seems to be best mates with Jack Grealish or, you know, not as close as Ben White, of course, but um, I'm I'm down with Jack if Calvin's down with Jack. It's all cool. I remember Oscar hammered me for calling him Jack, but it is what it is. Uh, just on Ben White as well, he's, he's supposed to be going to Arsenal. Brighton have turned down a £40 million bid for Ben White. And it was quite interesting because Arteta came out and said, I first spotted him during his time at Leeds. It's mad because we all, the way I see the press report Ben White and the way Leeds fans react to Ben White, you'd think he was still our player. And we just loaned him out to Brighton for a year, you know. Um, and just to finish, guys, Liam Cooper has been speaking about Calvin. Of course, England plays Scotland later on tonight at eight o'clock. And Cooper said, look, I told Calvin, first chance I get in the game, I'm going straight into him. And if he gets the chance, I'm sure he'll do the same to me. Um, look, I'm not even sure Cooper will start. I hope he does. Um, but I don't think he will. I think maybe T and E's back. And that means he'll go on the left side of the back three. And Cooper might not even start. But I think he'd love the opportunity to do that, especially going up against Calvin. Um, I'm going to give you a bold prediction now. I'm going to say it's going to be 3-0 England. Another assist in the offing for Calvin Phillips, hopefully. You can join me for that anyway. Quarter to eight, we'll be going live for the watch along for that. But that was your daily leads. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for watching as always keep subscribing to the channel liking the videos and stuff and uh, yeah get your comments in and of course hit that notification bell have an amazing weekend and I'll see you in a bit Leeds Leeds Leeds